Immigrants are marching here, no papers, no fear. Immigrants are marching here, no papers, no fear. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Buenos días a todos. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Um, my name is Nady Dominguez. I work for the Painters International. And first of all, I just really want to recognize all the Painter Union members that are here right now. Make some noise, y'all. Um, I am the assistant to the president on issues of immigration um, and also lead our strategic organizing division of the international. Yo trabajo para el presidente del Sindicato Internacional de Pintores um, y yo la, le asisto a él en cuestiones de inmigración y las pólizas de inmigración. We are here because what's happening to Hugo and Rodrigo is just not just unfair but unjust. And it is very important that we remember that the way that the immigration laws are happening in this country right now are completely inhumane, but further than that is without any due process. And it is exactly for that reason that we have two workers that the only thing they did wrong was show up to work that morning without knowing that they will be detained for over a month and a half for showing up to work. So it is so important that we don't forget that even today, you know, we just got word early in the morning, Hugo's uh, review that was going to happen today of why he should remain in this country was postponed. And Rodrigo, and Rodrigo still will have his time in front of an immigration judge after a month and a half of being detained away from his family. And it's not the way we think of criminal court where you get to like show your case, right? Like show your proof that something happened or didn't happen. Immigration court doesn't work like that. There are very, very little narrow, narrow paths for people like Hugo and Rodrigo to not just be free, but actually be able to work freely, be at home with their kids freely without fear of just even showing up to work. So this is bigger than Hugo and Rodrigo. We are here for both of them because we're not going to stand to this injustice. But it is so important that all of us make our voices be heard, push Director Jennings to do the right thing. He cannot be in a place like Northern California where all of us have done so much work to make sure that this state remains on the right side of history in this moment and act this way. He has complete power. He has complete prosecutorial discretion to do the right thing and show the rest of the country that people like Hugo and Rodrigo will not go unnamed and will not be separated for their families without due process. So can we do that, everyone? Can we put that pressure? Yo, yo estoy aquí porque es bien necesario decir las cosas como son, ¿verdad? Hugo y Rodrigo están ahí solamente por haber llegado a trabajar. La única cosa que hicieron mal fue ir a trabajar. Y es injusto que por el último mes y medio estén separados de su familia sin ningún proceso judicial donde puedan explicar y poder dar evidencia que tienen sus raíces con sus familias aquí. Entonces, nuestra presión tiene que continuar con el director Jennings, que tiene todo el poder de hacer la cosa correcta aquí, en California, en un lugar donde todos ustedes han hecho el trabajo de asegurarse que este estado va a seguir siendo en el lado correcto de la historia. Tenemos que poner presión al director Jennings y pelear por estos dos trabajadores, Rodrigo y Hugo. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. We have to fight. We have to continue to put pressure on Director Jennings to do the right thing and let these two workers be with their families. There is absolutely no reason these workers should be detained in detention center, making money off of them being there in a bed without being with their families while their immigration cases are reviewed. So please help me make some noise, make the calls, send the faxes. Yesterday, all of us together shut the line down because they couldn't take our the mass calls that we made. So we had to send faxes the old way, but we did. We got those papers, we dialed that number, and we sent those faxes, and we're gonna continue to do that for Hugo, for Rodrigo, and for every, every immigrant in this country that deserves to have the right to a due process, that deserves to be here. There is no good immigrant or bad immigrant. All of us have rights, and we have to fight for everyone to, be, make, to make sure that those rights are enforced. So thank you guys for being here. The union is with you. I'm so thankful for all the other unions here with us too. Thank you for showing up for our brother Hugo and Rodrigo. Um, and just thank you for all the community, for all the support. Y Adira, siga peleando, estamos con usted. Gracias. Rebecca Johnson. What 
I don't understand is why do you detain them? They're not going anywhere. They have wives and children. They're not going anywhere. They're not violent. They haven't done anything. But you detain them. No, I, why? It, it's just barbaric. And I don't understand why my country does stuff like that. I really don't. And are you in a union? Yeah, I'm in Local 510, Sign, Display, and Allied Trade. What should the unions do about it? There are a lot of union members who are immigrants who are afraid that they may be arrested. You know, and well, you need to put more thought into where you send them out to work, but you need to put, unions have power. You need to put pressure on your government to stop. You're supposed to be going after uh, pe criminals, people who are hurting people. These people aren't, they're, they pay their taxes, they pay their rent, they support their communities. I'm, it doesn't make any sense to me. Does it make it angry that this is the government spending our money, our tax dollars to do this kind of stuff? It doesn't make, anger doesn't get me anywhere. It, it just astounds me that we could be so cruel and so mean and so nasty. What, what can stop it? What do you think the union should do nationally? I mean, there's some unions here, but what do you think the AFLC and the union should do nationally? As a unit, they need to band together as one, one unit, and they need to put pressure on every elected representative that they have. You know, we back you in your elections, we back you in your proposals. Where do you think you would be if we didn't back you? And NAFTA has caused a lot of workers to immigrate from Mexico because of privatization, uh, HEDOs, they kicked off the land. Do you think these trade agreements have uh, forced workers to, to immigrate to the United States? Well, it's not so much that they forced workers to immigrate. They haven't benefited the either the Americans or the other countries that you have this with. What you've done is you've removed the small business guy and you've replaced it with a corporation. So you put all these people out of work and out of business for business. All the money is up here. So we can flex our power by you pick one company, one bank, whatever, and you don't do business with them. My name is Bruce Newberger. I'm a retired teacher, member of uh, Local 2121 and 4681 of CFT. And I'm here because of uh, what I consider to be the whole outrageous situation that's going on right now in the country regard to immigrants. It's been going on for a long time, but it's, it's getting worse. And the particular case of um, Hugo and Rodolfo uh, seems to me particularly egregious. They were dispatched to work at a job at, a, I understand, Travis Air Force Base, and they were taken in by ICE. Um, they were turned over by the employer, or in this case, I guess, the Air Force, whatever. Um, and, you know, it's intolerable and uh, we have to build a, a much more uh, determined movement against this whole, well, the regime, the Trump regime, but the, its policies as well, the, the whole attacks on immigrants. But wasn't this happening under the Obama administration as well? Absolutely. It happened. Um, Obama was the deporter in chief and he, de he deported more people than uh, any other uh, administration prior to him. So it's getting worse. So, but Trump is, is a, another step up from where Obama was and has basically, you know, laid down the gauntlet that they're going to go after everybody, whoever they are, regardless of how long they've been here, regardless of their ties here. And one of the things I think that's really important, it's been 31 years since there's been an actual pathway to legalization. So, I, you know, for what it's worth, I don't use the word undocumented. What I say is that people have been denied documents, that it's a systematic and conscious policy on the part of the employers as well as the government to keep people from having documents so that they can be more cruelly exploited and can be more uh, and prevented from organizing and all the other things that people do to, to gain their right. Uh, my name is Irene. I'm a member of the California Nurses Association. I'm just here because I'm against breaking up families. And what does this have to do with unions and labor? I think it's, 
uh, I think it's better for families if uh, the, both parents are in the home, they have people to love them and take care of them. It's better for our society to have contributing um, people. And the community, Latino, mostly Latino community that's being affected by this, how have you seen that effect in families and people that you know? Um, generally, people are afraid. I'm not, I'm not Latina, but you know, people are afraid of immigration, off officials coming. They don't want to report crimes because they're afraid of uh, police coming and taking away their family members. Up next, we're going to have uh, Hugo's partner, Yadira. Round of applause for Yadira for being here. Awesome. Buenos días. Good morning. Muchas gracias por estar aquí apoyando a Hugo y a Rodrigo. Thank you so much for being here and supporting Hugo and Rodrigo. Para que pronto estén de regreso con nosotros. So that they can be reunited with us soon. Ha sido un proceso difícil, pero con ustedes, pero ustedes han hecho que todo sea un poco más fácil con toda su ayuda. It has been a hard and difficult process, but with all your help, we're going to do it. Con su ayuda y su apoyo, ellos van a estar pronto de regreso. With your help and your support, we're going to be, uh, they're going to be reunited soon. Mil gracias por todo. Y siempre les digo que vamos a estar agradecidos esta vida y la que sigue. Many thanks to everybody and we're going to be forever grateful in this life and in the next. Mi esposo es una gran persona y excelente esposo y padre. Lo extrañamos muchísimo, pero siempre con fe y esperanza y agradecidos con Dios porque nos puso a las personas correctas para ayudarnos. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, my husband is, is an excellent husband and father, and we miss him very much. Uh, and with faith and strength, we are very grateful to God that he has put persons like you all for support, and we thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, thanks to everybody for coming, just like I want to thank everybody that was here um, at the last time. This place... ICE headquarters is probably going to be the place, like I said when we were here last time, this is the place we should be more often maybe than even City Hall right now if we're going to be supporting workers and the assault that is being done to all immigrants in this, this country. So Hugo and Rodrigo, um, we're there here specifically for them today. They're two union brothers, as everybody knows, and the fact that you can be living in this country, raise a family, have kids, be a husband, be a father, one day go to work at a job where you're paying taxes and contributing in the community and be automatically picked up and put in detention. There is something so intrinsically wrong about that, especially here in America. And we are going to continue. I know that the Painters Union and the Carpenters Union, um, who who is the, the union of the two brothers that were here for today, are continuing our operations. For those of you who don't know this, the San Francisco Labor Council, um, along with the Orange County Labor Council, are one of the two um, councils in of the 23 labor councils in, the, in California that has an immigration center, SF RISE, where we are helping all workers who have citizenship and immigration and work issues and this is one of the this is one of the highlight issues that we have right now great sign over here Carlos and Tom and each cell is each cell here on the staff of the Labor Council um, we are just so proud of, of the work that we're now finally able to do and expand the policies of the Labor Council in, a, in an actual institutional way so 
I'm just going to say this is a tragedy. This is absolutely despicable that the United States is capable of having policies that have Hugo and Rodrigo in detention right now, away from their families. And like all workers that we are supporting, we are going to continue to be outside here, not just for Hugo and Rodrigo, but for all workers that are going to be picked up and having this horrible policy that ICE deals with. So thank you everybody that's coming, both union workers, community groups. I know that there's uh, electeds if they're not here themselves because they're in session. Budget is going on in San Francisco and everybody's in session up in Sacramento. But we've had full support of all electeds between the supervisors, our assembly members, senators, and, and as well as Congress. And I know that Kamala Harris is working on this also. So thank you everybody and we're going to continue to be here. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Thank you. Justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! And unfortunately, Juana Cristina was not able to be here. Uh, she is Rodrigo's partner. However, we have her here uh, via phone, and she's going to say a few words, and we can go ahead and uh, translate as well. So, Juana Cristina is on the phone, and she's going to be sharing some words with you. Unfortunately, she couldn't be in person, but she still wants to send a message to the community that's standing in solidarity with Rodrigo and Hugo. Juana Cristina, por favor, nos puede compartir unas palabras? Sí, muy buenos días a todos y más que nada y principalmente estoy agradecida por todo el apoyo de todas las personas que se encuentran en estos momentos apoyando a mi esposo, a Hugo, a Yadira y a mí en estos momentos tan difíciles. Gracias, lo voy a traducir. Uh, hi everyone, thank you so much for the support that you all here today supporting me and Yadira through this process to liberate Hugo and Rodrigo. Continúe, Juana. Pues estoy realmente agradecida y conmovida por tanto y tanto apoyo que hemos recibido de muchísimas personas que no nos conocían y que, y que aún no conozco todavía. I'm very grateful for all the support that I've gotten from people that we don't even know, but all the momentum and the support that we got in, I'm thankful for that. Continúe. Yo quisiera que... Doy gracias a Dios y a ustedes por, por tanto apoyo y quisiera que, que siguieran apoyándonos en esta lucha tan, tan grande que hemos tenido y a la vez tan larga con nuestros esposos. I want to thank God and thank you for continuing to fight back against um, this, this fight um, and, continue, and encourage you to continue to support us. En estos momentos me personalmente me encuentro yo en un momento de, de angustia y de incertidumbre de lo que vaya a pasar hoy pero con la fe muy puesta en Dios y, y agradeciendo a todas las personas que están ayudándonos en this moment of time I find myself in uncertainty uh, because of what we're going through but I'm thankful and I, I'm going to continue to uh, I'm thankful for the support that we got them. Y esperando que, que se haga justicia para estos dos hombres que, que fueron a buscar, a, como luego decimos nosotros, el, el sostén de nuestra casa, el, el alimento para nuestros hijos, y que tuvieron esta horrible experiencia de, de estar pasando por esta horrible experiencia. Sí. We sí, hope that... Buenos, Sorry. Uh, we hope that uh, there's justice for Hugo and Rodrigo because they're the breadwinners of our homes, that something horrible like this happened to them, and they're, they're good men. Que fueron solamente a buscar a el sostén para nuestra casa y están viviendo estos horribles momentos, hombres que han sido trabajadores, que han llevado su vida limpia ante, esta, ante este país y ante esta sociedad solamente por el, el ¿cómo le diré? solamente por el por el error de ser indocumentados están pagando ese alto precio de estar separados de, de las familias 
Due to their undocumented status, they are paying this high price. They have the, has done nothing but to work for our families, to provide for our families, and now they find themselves in this injustice circumstances. Específicamente, yo y Yadira somos madres de tres, de tres hijos a niños que ya tienen pensamiento, que ya, que ya entienden las cosas que están pasando y es muy difícil para ellos aceptar todo esto que está pasando día tras día y la espera. Yadira and I are mother of three kids, and for our kids, it's been difficult for them to understand. Now they comprehend what we're going through, and it's difficult to to uh, to understand the circumstances that we're living under. Porque es muy difícil despertar y que tus hijos pregunten cuándo va a regresar, cuándo cuándo va a venir, cuándo va a entrar por esa puerta como antes lo hacía. It's hard for our kids to know when their fathers are going to come through the door. Um, what day is this going to happen when they're going to show up home? Esto no, estas, especialmente estas fechas tan, tan impactantes como fue el Día del Padre, pa, en especial para nosotros fue un día muy, muy fuerte porque tener que felicitar a su papá por medio de un teléfono y decían no abrazarte, papá, no besarte, como otros años lo hacíamos. This past Father's Day was a really difficult uh, cel uh, celebration for us because my, my kids had to um, celebrate Father's Day with their father through the phone without being able to hug him and tell him how much they love him. As well for me on Mother's Day, my kids tell me that it was hard because I had to spend Mother's Day uh, away from my husband, uh, away from him. Yo quisiera pedirles que por favor nos sigan apoyando en estos momentos tan difíciles y a partir de ahora de esta audiencia en lo que pase que darle gracias a todos y, y, y seguir pidiendo el, el apoyo de tantas y tantas personas que aún no nos conocemos personalmente yo por problemas um, emocionales no he podido acudir a muchas a muchas um, cosas que han hecho ustedes pero mil disculpas por todo esto pero yo desde aquí estoy también con ustedes en oración Due to my unfortunate emotional state because of what we're going through, I haven't been able to participate a lot of the rallies that you have all showed up to, and I apologize for that. But I want to continue to encourage all of you to continue to support our husbands, uh, regardless of the outcome of today's hearing. Y por supuesto también tengo en oración a todas esas personas que están más allá, arriba, los jueces, a quien tenga que decidir el futuro de ellos para que sean un poco blandos de corazón y piensen que estos hombres han sido buenos, han respetado las leyes, han pagado impuestos y solo quieren estar junto a sus familias, a sus familias que ya, ya les han dejado por tanto tiempo. And I'm also going to be praying for the higher ups, the judges, so that they can see the compassion and humanity in both Hugo and Rodrigo. Gracias, Juana Cristina. Muchísimas gracias a todo, a cada una de las personas que me está escuchando, mis bendiciones para ellos y espero seguir uh, siguiendo el, el, sintiendo el apoyo de todos ellos y esperemos en Dios que, que nos, nos ayude para estos días. Thank you all and bless you all and, and uh, thank you for everything that you have done to, for us. Gracias Juana. Hi, brothers and sisters, my name is Josie Camacho. I'm with the Alameda Labor Council. We represent 134,000 union members, 126 affiliated unions. And we are here today to stand with the wives and the families and all of our community that are being threatened every single day, every single hour. And it's wrong. Families should not be ripped apart. Fathers should not, should be able to spend Father's Day with their families. Mothers should be able to celebrate their family. Am I right? Yes! And we are going to continue fighting 
until they are released. I bring good news from the Bay Area delegation, our East Bay delegation, and I want to truly appreciate the San Francisco Labor Council, Tim Polson and Tom, for outreaching to our council. Our affiliated union is IUPAT. The carpenters aren't, but you know what? That doesn't matter. An injury to one is an injury to all. Yeah. And when a family gets hurt, we stand up, and we stand up strong. Yeah. The Congressional Barbara Lee, with, in coordination with Congressman Jaron Huffman, have sent a congressional letter to David Jennings, the ICE director, and we hope, David, you are listening, because that is a strong congressional delegation. Eric Smallwell, Congressman Rokana. We also have our State Assembly, Tony Thurman, State Chair of the Labor Committee in the State Legislature, Rob Bonta, Bill Quirk, Nancy Skinner, Senator, and Wykowski have all stood up. And we can only believe that because of them standing up with us, and with all of you here, I spoke to a sister from a community group from Marin, from Venetia. And there I see some of the affiliates are here from Unite here in USWW. We are all here to stand with you, and we will not stop until Hugo and Rodrigo are free. Si se puede, si se puede, si se puede. I am Bob Price, uh, I'm with the Freedom Socialist Party. I am with AFT, uh, American Federation of Teachers 2121, yes. So what's going on here? Uh, this is a rally for two uh, immigrants who have been uh, detained and are threatened with deportation and so the community, some unions, uh, some of their, one of their unions apparently, I, I believe, and a lot of community organizations are out here to um, demand that they be released and to, you know, call on an end to this, this uh, taking of immigrants and threats of deportation, stopping the ICE raids, basically. And what do you think the labor movement should do about this nationally? It's a lot of working people are being, union and non-union, are being arrested and are being... Uh, Deported. Right, I think the, it's incumbent on the unions to organize together uh, for immigrant defense. I mean, uh, basically a lot of the workers in, in all of the unions throughout this country are immigrants and whether we're immigrants now or descendants of immigrants, I mean, it's an immigrant country and, and the unions should be right up there defending the rights of the most, um, uh, uh, the most vulnerable workers, which are the immigrants. I mean, this, is, this should be the union's role. Uh, uh, and, I'm glad to see this union is out here, the, the, the painters and allied trades, uh, but we need to make sure a bigger union response is, uh, is happening. I mean, so. You're a member of AFT, uh, which is a national union, uh, Randy Weingarten. What has the AFT done nationally to mobilize its members against these immigration raids, which are affecting students and the schools and that kind of mm -hmm. To my knowledge, uh, the AFT has not done that much nationally. Uh, I think they'll, they'll talk a good game and say they're for immigrant rights, but are they out organizing with other unions um, in the AFL-CIO and in uh, Change to Win? I, I haven't seen that. I, I mean, I really think that's what's needed is uh, the grassroots workers pushing the leadership to, to form uh, big alliances nationally to defend immigrant rights. I mean, that's, that's, that's really one, one of the most effective ways we can defend the rights of immigrants and stop these ICE raids. Uh, my name is Nady Dominguez, N-E-I-D-I -E -I Dominguez, um, and I'm the assistant to the president of the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades, um, and we're here supporting um, Hugo and Rodrigo, who are both um, Construction worker, um, construction workers. Uh, one of them a painter, another one a carpenter, and we just want to make sure that Director Jennings know that we're not going to go silently and fighting to keep these families together, and that this is just one more effect of the enforcement-only approach on immigration against all immigrants in this country. How many of your members have been affected by these immigrant raids? What is their effect on your families of of your members? We haven't been able to quantify it, but the reality is that you know. 12% 12, 12 of our membership are Latino workers. Um, we don't, 
we don't ask about people's status. You know, that's not our job. We are the union. We're not the. We're not ICE. We don't enforce immigration laws. But we know that Ugo represents thousands of workers and millions of other members of this community that are being affected by these anti-immigrant policies. And I mean, do you think that the immigrants in this country should have documents? Should be able to continue to work here? I think that. People come to this country looking for a better life and that when you have, you know, a member of our community and society for the last 15 years paying taxes, the federal government has given no problem to Ugo being able to pay taxes, but he has no rights, right? Um, he's, been able, he's been able to pay his union dues for the last four years um, and to, for him to not have any path to be adjusted, to have lawful status in this country. And, be able to have a pathway to becoming a full citizen, quote unquote, it doesn't make sense. That's the effect of these broken policies and the approach from both the Obama administration and the Trump administration to only enforce immigration laws but not provide any path for people to adjust their status. This is the, this is the consequences we have. Families like Hugo and Rodrigo's that are being separated. President Trump, uh, Trump, President Trump said that Trump <laughs> said that uh, he would not go after people who did not have criminal records records, not go after families. Uh, what has been your experience about who's being targeted? I think in this moment, um, there's been so much, not just the policies, but the anti-immigrant sentiment in this country puts, puts everyone that feels or is presumed to be other um, in a very dangerous place. Um, and I think that all of us have been affected by this, you know, regardless if you were born here or not born here, all of us are feeling the effects of having and living in a moment historically where in this country we, we keep on feeling like we have to justify our own uh, humanity and experience to stay in our communities. And so I think, again, to just criminalize immigrants and not really answer the bigger questions of what are we going to do with um, like 11 million plus people that live in this country that have had their roots here, like Hugo and Rodrigo, that have their families here, that are union members here, that um, regardless of what has happened in the past, they are here and they're contributing. What are we going to do about that? Now, the unions, the AFL-CIO, the different unions that are being affected by this, do you think there should be more of a national mobilization of the entire trade union movement against these ICE attacks? Absolutely. I think that workers like Hugo and Rodrigo are the future of the labor movement and are the future of within the construction industry those are some those are some of our members and construction workers whether they're union or not they are who are making these building these buildings making this country run and so as a building trades organization we are standing up to these anti-immigrant policies and saying that we need better better solutions and that this is not the solution now president trump says he wants to renegotiate nafta to make it better what has been the effect of NAFTA on immigration and forcing workers in Mexico to the United States because of the economic policy? I think free trade agreements affect both workers abroad and workers here in the U.S. Um, when you have a trade agreements that allow for businesses to have all the tax breaks, to get all the benefits of moving jobs away from the U.S. to other countries, that are going to be workers are going to be exploited. U.S. workers are going to lose their jobs. So any talk about trade agreements that don't really don't really address the needs of working people, both internationally and domestically, it's a it's a trade union agreement. It's a trade agreement that we can't accept. And so the effects of NAFTA and the effects of other trade agreements have been devastating to workers here in the U.S. and workers abroad. Um, and as a labor movement, we need to be able to answer the challenge. We need to be able to raise the challenge and the questions of how do we address the working conditions and fight for all workers, regardless of what side of the border they're in. And are you in favor of the cancellation of NAFTA? I can't answer that question. <laughs> but um, NAFTA has forced a lot of workers from Mexico, the ajitos. I just don't the, think the, they like have, you know, like have like enough of a expertise to be able to say that. But what I do know is that trade agreements that don't don't address work, the working conditions of workers abroad and here are just not good for working class people. Okay, and what can people do to help uh, you go and and yeah. the other um, They could keep on. To help Hugo and Rodrigo stay together with their families, we are asking people to make calls to the ICE field office here in San Francisco to Director David Jennings and ask that they be released immediately.